Now, this is where I had to coin the word <clears throat> educationalism. What does that mean? That means that actually instead of education being something that equips you for professional life in some way, you know, and it's just something you do therefore when you're young and then you go and live your life or you do your job or you're productive or whatever it is. But no, educationalism means that society acknowledges that the purpose of society is education. That the highest thing humans do is transform themselves and learn things. That's actually what educationalism means. So the opposite of what we think. And uh, it's something unique, I think, in, the, in Buddhist societies, actually. That education is the, itself the highest purpose of the human being. And now, quote, My officers charged with the spread of truth are occupied with various kinds of services beneficial to ascetics and householders, and they are empowered to concern themselves with all teachings. I have ordered some of them to look after the affairs of the Buddhist community, some to take, he didn't use the word Buddhist, so it's in a bracket, some to take care of the Brahmin and Ajivaka ascetics, because, you know, they didn't have to use the word community, Ashoka didn't, because everybody knew what was the Sangha. It was so prevalent in society of his day. Uh, and some to work among the Jains, who were the closest uh, group to the Buddhists, and some among the various other religions. Different officials are thus assigned specifically to the affairs of different religious schools, but my officers for spreading the truth of the Dharma are occupied with all of them. So in a way, he takes this reality teaching, teaching of the nature of reality and the discovery of that, and the education in that, as somehow something that's involved with all the religious things. He seems to separate them, which is very interesting analytically. So education, therefore, is the main method of truth, what he called truth conquest, as well as the most important survival technique known to humans. It promotes enlightenment as the flowering of the individual's own awareness, sensibility, and powers, and thereby develops a strong society. Within the context of the politics of enlightenment, it is understood that the purpose of human life is education, not that education merely prepares a person for some other life purpose. Education is required to accelerate the process of evolution that brought the individual to human birth in the Buddhist biological view and ensures that they achieve the quantum jump of awareness from the constriction of automatic self-centeredness into the freedom of selfless relativity. Quote again from Ashoka, the people can be induced to advance in dharma by only two means, by moral prescriptions and by meditation. Of the two, moral prescriptions are of little consequence, but meditation is of great importance. The moral prescriptions I have promulgated include rules making certain animals inviolable and many others. But even in the case of abstention from injuring and killing living creatures, it is by meditation practice that people have progressed in the Dharma most. So here, although I just want to say that what they are translating here as meditation is the word bhavana, which actually means uh, making something come into being. So I'm not sure it's quite the same range of meanings as our word meditation, but although it's commonly translated as that. But it means bring something into being in your being. That's like if you understand something, then you concentrate on it, and then it comes to life in your being. So in a way, realization might be a better, realization practice might be a better translation. I'm toying with, but it's so established for bhavana uh, meditation is that, uh, you know, it's hard to change it. But I think realization might be better, actually.